call this regular Board of Education meeting to order on the 26th of August at 7 o'clock. We can all stand and take a pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, our mission statement, Angela. Everything Community Schools, we provide a quality education that empowers students to be successful in a global community. Thank you. Roll call, Angela. Sarah? Here. Jessica? Here. Kyle? Here. Christine is uh, absent with notice. Margaret? Here. Sherry? Here. And I am here. You have one. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have approval of the agenda. A motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have the approval of the consent agenda. A motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the consent agenda as presented in the attached documentation. Okay. Is there any discussion? Um, we've had some uh, new hires the last couple days. Um, we had some, also some resignation. Um, Emily Neiman, our fifth grade teacher, who we had hired at the August 12th meeting, uh, resigned to take a position in another district. Uh, Dawn Shear, one of the assistant cooks at the middle school, also re resigned for personal reasons. Uh, Derek Malone, um, our JV basketball coach, resigned. He um, took a new job, so the time commitment is very um, uh, hard for him to commit to that program. And then Beverly Becker, who we hired over the summer for the preschool, and actually the summer job program, resigned. However, new hires, uh, we have Alicia Gardner from middle school, who will be a math teacher, Christina Walla, a math teacher at Richmond Middle School, um, Tiffany Taylor, um, she's the replacement fifth grade for uh, Emily, um, Emily, or Jessica, uh, I always forget this, I apologize, uh, Schleihuber, I believe, an e ELA teacher, and Stacy Buchanan is an ELA math teacher. Um, that 0.71 is more than likely going to be at 0.86. Um, we have an hour that we've got to, within her day, that we're trying to adjust the schedule, but it doesn't look like it's going to be able to happen. So um, we'll, we'll be using it for interventions or, or um, working with kids at the high end. And as well as uh, Caitlin West, the freshman volleyball coach. So those are our new areas. Great. Um. And I apologize, I forgot one. Kelly Dumas. Um, with Pam Bailey being out, she is working in the evenings for our um, pupil accounting department. Okay, thank you. Any other discussions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, I'm looking for a motion to go into closed session. Pursuant to Section 8B of the Michigan Open Meetings Act, I move that the Board of Education go into closed session for the purposes of the student disciplinary hearing for student 032519-8. Support. Okay, is there any discussion? Sherry? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Angela? Aye. Margaret? Aye. And I vote aye. We're going into closed session and we will be back out in the meeting. Um, tonight I had the, the privilege of talking to the, all the classes at the high school. Um, and I've been um, talking with various groups. In front of you, you have a large calendar. Um, the stuff highlighted in red, the items out is a countdown to the election. Um, the hi items highlighted in yellow are um, the meetings or various groups that we're going to present as a district to and try to get the information out there about the bond. Um, and obviously, the board, you're always welcome to attend all of them or any of that you can in your schedule. Um, but I just wanted to point out a couple of things. Um, today, I, I had also had the privilege of welcoming back the entire staff. And it's been a while since we had all the staff in one room. The last couple of years, we did it by building. Um, I really enjoy just getting them all together and seeing that very few times you get to the mingle across district. But some of the things I think is important to, that set the stage for the bond was um, some really interesting facts about the district. You know, on here it's the we've been rated, rated by 2020 best schools. Mitch is the number one safest school in the Cone County. We have the top five uh, 
in best school district and best teachers. And these are rated, they, if you look at the statistics behind it, how they did it, um, it's about uh, parent and student feedback. It's not always about the test scores, they weigh into that a lot. When you go on and you rate a school online and so forth, and they read, they got, these are part of the ratings that they use. Um, top 10 in Macomb County for best places to teach and athletic program. Um, we've recently, in the last couple of years, we're academic state champs, and though it's not officially public yet, um, the actual score, and I can tell you that our current high school senior class well exceeded the county, state, national averages on the SAT. In fact, we have one actually national merit uh, semifinal, which means um, he or she is in the top less than 1% in the nation, so that's pretty remarkable. Um, and these are some of the other uh, stats I was sharing with parents. Um, just recently, you noticed that we've added the fifth section of kindergarten and first grade. Um, I can't tell you in all the records I've looked through when the last time we've had five sections. It's been a while. So um, people are definitely choosing Richmond. So um, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole bond presentation because obviously the board you uh, voted and you're, you're very much familiar with it. But I do want to share with you, um, you know, I've been kind of watching Facebook and the um, comments that are being made and, and questions and we're trying to answer them as quickly as possible. Um, this is the one slide I just want to highlight the parents. The average homeowner is going to pay about 40 cents a day when you look at average. Most people in Richmond are going to be below that, but when you look at the average, it's about 40 cents a day. But when you look at the total magnitude of the bond, this is a breakdown by building up here. It shows that uh, basically 44% of the bond is, is the high school, which deals with a lot of athletics. That's where it's tagged in the bond. Um, this 3% is the buses, the uh, transportation building, and the, the uh, Roosevelt Civic Auditorium. But if you break it down even further, we're about 10% of the total bond is athletics. And what I defined as athletics is the synthetic turf, the auxiliary gym, and the site work associated with that, the baseball and softball dugouts. There's some showcases for the trophies and the weight rooms at the middle school and high school. There's some things that could be athletic that um, I believe are also instructional. Like for instance, the lockers. We need those locker replacements for the gym classes and so forth. But our athletics also use it, so I didn't include that in this particular one. But the big ticket items that people have been talking about in the bond, um, almost 90% of the bond is instructional, non-athletic. And I think that's important to realize that this is a, a comprehensive and balanced bond proposal um, and so forth. So, You'll see on the calendar that um, each Sunday, um, beginning next Sunday, we have a, um, a social media post that's going to highlight aspects of the bond. Particularly the first one is um, because this has been a question that's starting to surface in a perception that athletics is a good chunk of the bond. Well, in the big picture, it's not. Um, because even some of these others are going to be used by instructional programs like the auxiliary gym. I mean, just look at the robotics team. If they could have that auxiliary gym, we could begin hosting robotics tournaments here in Richmond and really begin growing that program more. So um, stay tuned and we're, we're, we're on the informational campaign. Uh, today at the Welcome Back, I asked uh, many staff members, all staff members, my goal is that 100% of the staff members help us participate in the informational campa campaign in some fashion that's listed on here. Whether it's the door-to-door -door walking, passing out literature, we have staff members who are there tonight um, at the Blue Devils days, just at the bond table, just asking and passing out information. So, um, that's it. Thank you. Next, we have public comments. Portion of our meeting where people can come and address the board. Is there anyone who would like to address the board? Next up, we have Superintendent Legislative Update. Um, the update for the superintendent is today started the welcome back for staff. We have Blue Devil Days today for high school. Tomorrow is middle school. Elementary will be on Wednesday with preschool this coming Tuesday, the first day of school, because they officially start on Wednesday. Um, I have no legislative update. There's not, there hasn't been a whole lot of movement. Um, the clock is ticking towards that 30 days where they're going to have to start notifying state employees of a, of a state shutdown. Um, I did receive a letter today from the governor. Actually, every superintendent did. Um, basically um, recognizing that the legislative process and not having a budget has put districts in a bind. 
Um, there was the Macomb Bailey's done an article. There are many districts that, um, are, that their contracts are not being able to be settled because we don't know financially what we're able to do. We're in a whole different position, though they did reference uh, Richmond in that article. Um, so really from that end, we're just waiting. Um, they, there is talk, um, but there is a lot of talk regarding the um, pension fund being the, the way to raise revenue um, for the roads and, and kind of create a balance. So um, hopefully not, um, but it, we'll see. We'll just stay tuned. Hopefully uh, next board meeting I'll be able to tell you we have a budget. We know what we're, we know what we're getting this year. <laughs> and we're already, uh, at the end of this month, two months in the school year, two months of expenses. So that's it. Thanks, Brian. Oh, it is interesting. <coughs> Does anybody have anything to share? Did, um, that letter that you took, we got that in an email from MASD, from yes. Whitmer. They were all, they were Is passing, that yes. the same letter that you talked about? Mm -hmm. And I think that that letter, I think she absolutely alludes to the fact that there's going to be a shutdown, yeah. like what you've been saying. And I, I think that's terrifying um, for school districts. Um, but that's... Well, and the issue is that, if, you know, there, there has been conversation about a 30-day budget extension. If that happens, you know, it's kind of a, they, they, they limit how far they want to go. But our October payment is our first payment, correct? Can you have yes. them? That, so if there is a shutdown, mm -hmm. we don't have an October payment. Well, they're talking, yeah, shutdown is Yeah, extension. now they do an extended 30-day budget, you know, we'll Shutdown's one day. extension is. Right. Yeah, so that that is, um, and there's, there's, there are opposite ends. You're right. Yeah, if you if you didn't look at your email, read read the letter because it's um, I think that's absolutely what she's saying. Um, not just that I was at the high school and I know Kyle was there tonight for the uh, Blue Devils night and it's always good to see all the kids roaming around and the parents. But Mr. Castle did a really good job. Um, how he talks talks to kids and the interactions with them and. There were staff that were working the, the tables and passing out information for the bottom, so that's 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 good to see. And we have two new clubs at the high school. They were volunteer clubs by staff. One is the Young uh, Republicans and one is the Young Democratic Club. So oh, I said we have one, we have the other. So okay. I'm looking forward to the debate, the presidential debate they're going to have. They lots of kids signed up. That's great. That is good. Uh, yeah, that's get involved that's in that's politics. Interesting. Interesting time for that. <laughs> right, yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Good for them. All right, next we have our action items. First up is the student athletic handbook. Uh, it was presented to you at the last uh, board meeting. There are no uh, changes in the athletic handbook from what was presented at the last board meeting. Motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the proposed changes to the 2019 20 student athlete code of conduct handbook as presented in the attached documentation. Support. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion passes. Up to parent uh, There were three uh, adjustment, name changing adjustments on the second page. Uh, Mrs. Rickard, I did not have her married name. I still had her, uh, her previous name. And I had Chris Reinhardt, still as the dean of students at the high school, and it's Becky Bower. And then on page 40, uh, under the new attendance um, codes, um, Documented absence. There's documented target. Documented had the M, E, and N were all jumbled up. So we corrected that. A motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the proposed changes to the 2019-20 student parent handbook as presented in the dash documentation. Support. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Um, Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I motion that following a closed session hearing, the board votes to reinstate student 032519 8 consistent with the attached documentation. Okay. Any discussion? The attached documentation to the board is the actual resolution you passed at the last time showing that he met the correct, it's the same resolution. Jessica? Aye. Angela? Aye. 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 Aye.
Thank you.